Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this press conference with the Commissioner Malmstrom. I would kindly ask those of you not interested in the topic of the press com conference to quietly leave the room. And those who stay with us, I will give the floor to the Commissioner, who will present to you the report published today by the European Commission on Trade and Investment Barriers. And Commissioner Malmström will also use this occasion to make a state of play of some of the ongoing trade negotiations in which we are involved, notably with Japan. Without further ado, Commissioner, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, uh, trade agreements, uh, and we'll come to that later, of course, play a very important role in EU trade policy. And they attract a lot of attention, and that is good and excellent, but they are not the only things uh, and the only game in town. Just as important on a more daily basis is our ba battle on the ground to identify and bring back down practical problems. Uh, we see that European exporters face a lot of problems and uh, together with them, the industry, the government, in something we call the market access partnership, we are trying to deal with them. So I'd like to share with you a few of the results of this year's report about market access strategy. It's called Trade and Investment Barrier Report and we also have my friends from DG Trade who can ask more, answer more technical questions and who can brief you on the details uh, should you want so. This report takes you into account the real barriers that our companies report at. With that I mean border measures um, such as tariffs or uh, quotas or unjustified regulatory barriers or uh, internal tax measures, etc. And the report being, brings us two main news, one good one and the bad one. Let's start with the bad ones. Because the report confirms that the rise of protectionism is real. That affects uh, European firms and it affects our workers. And last year alone, EU exporters reported a 10% increase in the number of trade barriers. And this is a lot because it could cost our business more than 27 billion euros in lost exports. So it's a lot of money involved in this. Unfortunately, we also see that it is the G20 countries who account for the highest numbers of barriers. Russia, China, India, to mention a few. And at the G20 summit in Hamburg next week, the EU will of course urge the leaders to walk the talk and resist protectionism. Uh, we note this and we take action and we will defend Europe against those who do not play by the rules and the EU leaders in Hamburg will be very clear about this and uh, fight hard for the right of our exporters by all means at our disposal. Now the good news. Uh, the report also brings some good news revealing that our market access strategy is working. Just during the course of last year, a total of 20 existing trade barriers, including several long-standing ones, were resolved. And this created, of course, additional export opportunities for our companies, amounting to billions of euros, or the equivalent of a small trade deal, such as the one we have with Colombia. We have removed trade barriers in 12 different countries around the world, ranging from South Korea to Japan, Argentina, Ukraine, just to mention a few. The main types of barriers recorded are agriculture, alcoholic beverages, automotive, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals and ICT. And they are also the sectors who have benefited the most from this work, small and big companies alike. We've solved concrete problems that support thousands of jobs and many citizens. And just one example is an Italian small company, Framesi, SPA, exporting cosmetics to 70 different countries across the globe. And the barrier they reported to us may sound silly if you look at it. For instance, China wanted to forbid the adding stickers on the packaging with all the information of the product in the local language. This is a method widely used in cosmetic industry all around the, Euro the world. I think you have seen it here in Europe. And this ban would have effectively closed the Chinese market for the company, since it was not able to open a whole new production for the packaging. So something as concrete as a sticker could actually threaten thousands of jobs in Europe. And as a result uh, of our discussions with the Chinese authorities, China did not proceed with this ban. So this allowed Framesi, as many other companies, to continue exporting to this crucial market and support jobs. And this, uh, the cosmetic industry in Europe employs 1.8 million workers in Europe and comprises 
4,600 small and medium-sized companies. So this is, uh, of course, a work that we are doing in the Commission, but we would not be able to do it without the support and the information and the close cooperation with industry and member states. But we can do more together, and we will. In the Trade for All strategy, we called for an enhanced partnership that would reinforce our efforts to joint work and to extend them to implementation of our trade agreements as well. And talking about our trade agreements, just a small update. This week, we will uh, continue um, our strategy to open up markets in Asia and Latin America. Today, another round in our EU-Mexico talks uh, will be starting here. And I expect to see good progress during the week in all areas of this deal. As you know, I was in Mexico a couple of weeks ago, and together with the Mexican minister, uh, we agreed to do our utmost to have this agreement done by the end of the year. Also, I have my chief negotiator for Japan in Tokyo, instructions to stay as long as it is needed uh, to try to get this deal down. Uh, we are in a very intense phase of our negotiation and hope to close an agreement in principle very soon. This is an agreement that will help us shape globalization in line with our values. And in the current international environment, an ambitious agreement between the EU and Japan would send a powerful signal to the rest of the world that two of the largest economies of the world are ready to stand up against protectionism in favor of openness and trade and investment because these are the best tools to harness globalization and shape it and create more jobs, more growth, more sustainability. This will be a European trade agreement uh, following our new state-of-the-art model containing the same guarantees for EU values as in the CETA, the Canadian agreement, for instance, meaning like principles like uh, transparency, EU standards, when it comes to social, environment, consumer protection, will be there, the right to regulate, sustainable development. These things are not up to negotiation and they will be enshrined in the final text. This is a short update on where we are. I'm, of course, happy to answer any questions. Daniel. Thank you very much.